Earlier last year, Azure Pipeline's YAML continuous deployment features were announced. This allows configuring release pipelines as part of the YML file, which was earlier limited to the build pipelines alone. Prior to this, the release pipelines could only be configured using the visual user interface editor. This is now referred to as classic releases. With YAML releases, the pipeline lives in the YML file along in the source code repository. This allows versioning of the build and release pipeline and it grows along with the application. In this video, we will learn about YAML releases, its high level structure and use that to deploy a web application to Azure. If you are new here, my name is Rahul and welcome to this channel. I talk a lot about .NET, Azure and DevOps in this channel. So if this is of interest, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Without much delay, let's head off to my Azure DevOps account. I have a new repository set up here with the name YAML releases. There is already a source folder and also a deploy folder pushed up to this repository. The source folder contains an ASP.NET Core React single page application template. I had spoken about this template and showed you how to set up a build deploy pipeline a while earlier in the videos linked here. Under the deploy folder, we have an ARM template file, the web app.json file, which creates an app service plan and also an Azure web app under that. This is used to create the Azure resources when we set up the release pipeline. We also have a web app.parameters file, which takes in an app service plan name and also a web app name. We will replace this in the release pipeline to the appropriate name for the stages or the environment that it's getting deployed to. Here, you can notice that it starts with a hash and also end with a hash. We will use this pattern to do the variable replacement, which we will see in a moment later. If you are new to ARM template and how to create these files, I have a separate video walking through these entire steps to create a file very similar to this. The video is linked here and also in the description below. Before we head off to create the release in a YAML file, let's see how the classic releases used to look like for this particular application. So if you come under pipelines and navigate to releases, I have already created a release for this particular project. You can find that under YAML releases. So if I click edit, you can see the template for this particular release. Here, I have this bound to the artifact to a build pipeline. And also we have a dev and a test stage. Inside the dev, I have three jobs, which is one, replacing a token for the web parameters JSON file, which we saw earlier, and also creating the ARM template deployment based on that ARM template file. Once that's done, we deploy this to the Azure Web App Service. The build pipeline that is targeted here is also available as part of this project. So if I go into pipelines, I can see the YAML releases build only pipeline. If I click into that, I can click edit and there is a YML file that's living as part of the same repository. You can see in here it builds the application using .NET 5, using the .NET publish command and it publishes the artifacts and publishes the ARM artifact files as well. This file is available as part of the repository, which is all public and you can go through this if you wish. Coming back to releases, you can see this is already released into the dev environment. So if I go into my Azure subscription, you can see there is one which is the YAML releases classic dev. Now if I go to this application, I can see this starter template from the .NET Core React single page application. So let's see how we can now move this into a YAML release pipeline. So let's navigate back to the source code. Let's go to the repository and files. So the build only pipeline is living inside this YML file. So let's take a copy of all this because we'll be using exactly the same to set up the build pipeline. It's only the release pipelines that we will be moving under this file again. So let's take a copy, come back to pipelines and go to pipelines again. To create a new pipeline, you can click the new pipeline up here. So let's select Azure Repos Git. Let's choose the appropriate repository. In this case, it's the YAML releases. So let's choose that. In configure your pipeline, we can start with an empty pipeline. So we can say start a pipeline and that creates a default set of pipelines. 
Let's remove all this and replace it with the contents that we copied. So now we have a build pipeline to build the whole project. Let's modify this to start adding the release pipeline as well. Let's look at a high level overview on how the YAML release pipelines are structured. So here we have a trigger which then starts off a pipeline which has multiple stages. As you can see, there is stage, another stage and another stage. Inside each of these stages, which is now associated with an agent, it has a list of jobs. So these jobs then has a set of steps under them. So these are the steps that actually does the work, like building the application or copying files or publishing to an Azure resource, etc. So let's see how we can set this up. Now, if we come back to the new file that we just created, you can see that there is no stages mentioned here. So the stages is optional to keep this backward compatible because the original build pipeline didn't have a concept of stages. So now we can move this whole pipeline under a stage, which is the build stage. So let's start doing that. The trigger is still common. So let's leave that and start adding the stages after that. So let's copy down everything after the trigger. Let's remove it for a second and start adding stages. So if you start typing in stages, it will provide the intelligence. So you can select stages from here. Once there, you can create a new stage, which is our build stage. So let's give this a name, build. Now under a stage, we saw it had jobs. So let's go add jobs under the stage, build. So we can use jobs and create jobs for that. So let's create a first job, which is build web app. Under the job, we can paste back in the contents that we removed earlier for the build pipeline. So let's go to the next line and paste back in all those contents. Since this is not aligned properly, let's select the entire contents and then use tab to align this under the job. So pressing tab, this is going to move that under to the job. Now I have this lined up right under the job, which is now good enough for us. So let's remove this extra line if you want. And now you can collapse this whole stage as one stage, which is the build. This is now a valid pipeline again with stages added to that. Let's start adding a new stage under the stage build. So let's go to the last line. Make sure we have the cursor in the right position. Use dash and press stage again. In this case, we need to deploy to the dev environment. So let's name this deploy dev. We can also add in a display name if you want and provide a valid name for the stage. So let's say deploy to dev. So let's make sure we have a line in between that. So if you scroll up, you can now collapse this build stage so that you can start seeing the entire deploy dev stage. Under the stage we saw earlier, we need to add jobs and each of these jobs will contain the agent that this needs to be run on. So let's start adding jobs under this. So we can say jobs and start defining what kind of a job this is. Since this is a deployment job, we can use the dash deployment instead of the dash job that we used earlier for the build pipeline. So let's choose deployment. A deployment job is a specific type of job which is required for deployment. So it has a collection of steps which are sequentially run against an environment. Now, the benefits of a deployment job is that it provides deployment history and also apply a deployment strategy, which we will see in a moment later. So let's go back and start adding the pool for this particular deployment. Now, since the job requires an agent, we can come back to the stage pipeline and use the same agent that we used inside the build. Since this is a .NET Core application, I can use a Linux based image as well. So let's collapse this. Under deployment, let's paste the pool, which is now a VM image of Ubuntu Latest. Now earlier we saw that a deployment job can specify an environment. So let's specify an environment and this is going to be the dev environment. If this doesn't exist already, it will be automatically created. We will see about environments later in this video. So let's keep going and start adding the strategy that we saw earlier for deployment. This is defined under the strategy keyword. So let's use strategy and then we can pick one of the available strategies. If we go back to this URL, 
we can see their strategies that's available as part of the YAML release pipeline. So we have run once deployment strategy. We also have a rolling deployment strategy and a canary deployment strategy. Each of these has separate functionalities. We will be using the run once deployment strategy. Run once is a simple deployment strategy where all the lifecycle hooks will be executed once. So what are lifecycle hooks? So if you scroll above, you can see that there are different lifecycle hooks available as part of a strategy like pre-deploy, deploy, route traffic, etc. You can read this documentation to understand all the details. For now, in this video, we will only be using deploy because that's all we are looking to do. So if we come back to the pipeline, we can start defining the strategy. So if you go under strategy, we get an option to choose three of the options that we just saw. So let's use run once and specify the deploy hook. You can also see the other hooks that's available here and you can use that to do whatever you require. So let's choose deploy and specify steps under that. This is where we will start adding deployment steps in this pipeline. Earlier in the classic releases, we saw three steps that's required. First, we had to replace the ARM template parameters file. Then we had to create the ARM template deployment and then the Azure app deployment. So let's do exactly the same in here. To add a new step, the easiest is to use the show assistant, which is on the right up here. So clicking that is going to pop out a menu where you can start adding tasks. So let's first search for the replace token task. This is a task available from the marketplace. So you might have to add it before you can start using it. Since I have it already added, let's select that. Now this is going to ask me the root directory where this needs to look at. So let's specify the drop dash arm folder where these templates are getting packaged into. So we can use the dollar pipeline dot workspace variable, which is available by default to refer into the workspace directory. Under that, we use the drop dash arm directory. So let's select that. We want to target only the parameters file. So let's explicitly specify the name of the web app dot parameters dot JSON. After that, we can leave all of this as default. Under advanced, we can use the prefix that's used. So earlier when we saw the file, we saw that it was prefixed with a just a hash. So let's remove the extra braces and that should then replace these parameters. So everything else looks good. Let's make sure we have the cursor under the appropriate position, remove the extra dash and then click add. So this is going to add that task right under the steps. So we have the replace token task now added. Next, we need the arm template deployment task. So let's again press go to a new line under the steps and then search for the arm template deployment. So we can add that task and start specifying the parameters for that. So let's choose a service connection. In this case, I'll use a Visual Studio professional connection that I already have and the subscription that's under that. Let's give in a resource name. Now this is automatically showing the resources that's available as part of my subscription, but let's add in a new one. So let's say YAML releases dash dev and say use that particular name. In the location, let's choose Australia since I am right now there. For the template file, let's copy the drop arm folder that we used earlier and also make sure that we give the web app dot JSON file name. For the parameters file, we can specify the same name with the dot parameters. So we have everything specified here. The deployment mode is incremental. So let's make sure the cursor is again in the right position and then click add. Now this is going to add the next task that's required for the ARM template deployment. Up here in the root directory, there is an extra codes. So let's make sure to remove that. Now that looks good. Now to add the last task, we need to add an Azure web app deployment. So let's make sure that the cursor is in the right position and then again search for Azure web app deployment, which is the Azure app service deploy task. So let's select that, choose the same subscription. So I have the Visual Studio Professional. It is a web app on Windows. I can give an app service name, which now comes from the variables. Earlier, we saw in the source code that this parameter file has a name arm underscore web app. So let's use the exact same name as our web application name. To use that as a variable, we can specify dollar and specify the web app parameter name. 
for the package or folder, we can again use the $pipeline.workspace and pick up the zip folder under that particular workspace. So this is going to have the web app which is deployed as a zip in the build pipeline. So if you scroll up, you can see in the build stage that we had published the web artifact which is a zip file. Inside here, this is publishing it as a zip file. So let's collapse that, make sure we have it in the right position and click add. So this has added the last step which is publishing the web application. Now that we have defined the stage, let's collapse this to make sure everything is aligned properly. We now need to specify the variables that's required for the ARM template and also this step that we use the ARM underscore web app. Now to define variables, we can do that right above the jobs. So if we go under the display name, we have the variables option. In here, we can specify a group that's a variable. So let's use that and specify dash group. We can give in a name. So let's choose YAML releases dash dev. Since this is the dev environment, we will specify this group a moment later. Before that, let's save this file. Let's create a new branch named Azure Pipelines and start a pull request as well. If you are new to pull request workflow, you can check out the video linked here. So let's click save. So that has saved this file. Now to create the variable groups, let's go under library on the left on the menu. So under the library, you can create a new variable group. So let's make sure we have the name as the same. So let's say YAML releases dash dev. Under this, we need two variables. One is the web app and the app service plan name. So let's copy this, create a new variable, which is the app service plan. Let's call this YAML dash releases dash dev. And we also need the other one, which is the ARM web app name. So let's use that and give in the same name. So let's say YAML releases dash dev. So now we have the variables created. If you want, you can also link these variables from Azure Key Vault, which I have shown you in another video. So let's click save. So now we have the YAML releases dev created up here, which is also used in the pipeline. So if you select all, we can see the pipeline that we just created. So select YAML releases and click run pipeline. Now, by default, this is going to look into the master branch, but we had that saved in Azure Pipelines because that is the pull request branch that we created. So let's select that and click run. Now this has started the whole pipeline process and you can see there are two stages that's coming down here. So one is the build stage and the other one is the deploy to dev stage. So if we click into the build stage, you can see all the steps under that. Now you can see it's using the .NET step, building the application, and then it will publish the artifact. Once this is completed, it will automatically move into the deployment stage. So let's wait for that to happen. Now the build stage is completed and you can see there are two published artifacts. So if we click that, we can see the drop file, which is the web app, which is a zip that we have used in the releases pipeline, and also the drop arm folder, which has the two template files. So this is what we referred using the $pipeline.workspace variable. If we go back to the pipeline, you can see that the deploy to dev step has started. Now this is downloading the artifact. It's replacing the tokens. It says two of the tokens are replaced, looking at those parameters file. Now this is running the ARM template deployment file. So once that's run, it will move on to the web application deploy. If we were to go into the Azure portal, we can go under resource groups and we can see that the resource group is already appearing up here. So if you select into that and go into deployments, you can see the ARM template deployment that's happening. So this now says succeeded, which means it is successful. So you can also see the deployment details and you can see it created a site and also the server forms up here. So you can see the full details of the ARM template deployment under here. If you go back to the pipelines, this whole step should be now successful. And now it's deploying the web application from the zip file. So let's wait for that to complete before we run the website. The deployment is successful and it's successfully deployed to the dev resource. So let's switch back to the Azure portal, go back into YAML releases dev, go to overview and select the web application that's created. So this has the same name that we gave inside the variable group. 
because that was replaced using the replace tokens tasks. So let's navigate to this URL and you can see the same React application set up and running successfully. So let's go back into the Azure DevOps account and under environments, we can now see the dev environment. This was automatically created when the release was created. So if you navigate into that, you can see the successful deployment that has happened under this. You can further drill down into here and see what all the changes are and also the associated work items if there are any. So if you go back into jobs, you can see a summary of all the jobs that has happened. An environment is a collection of resource that can be targeted by deployments. We saw in the pipeline how we targeted the dev environment using the environment keyword. So the advantage of using an environment is that it has all the deployment history. You can trace the commits and work items just like we saw now. And also you can allow permissions to deploy to this particular environment. So let's see that in action. Navigating back to environments, let's go create a new environment and name this test. So let's say for this particular environment, let's choose resource none because we don't use Kubernetes or any virtual machines. So let's say create, which creates the test environment. Now let's say deploying to the dev environment needs to automatically happen anytime a build is happening. But to deploy to test, we need certain approvals. Maybe that needs to be approved from the dev team that everything is working fine on the development environment. So to create these approvals, let's go to the right dot dot and add the approvals and checks. From here, you can add various approval options. To see everything, you can click see all. So you can see it has an approval, which is basically by a user or a group. You can set branch controls, you can send the time of deployment, etc. So let's check approvals and click next. In here, let's add myself. You can also specify if the approvers can approve their own build runs and also the timeout in days or hours and minutes. So basically this build will get timed out after 30 days. You can increase that if that's what you want. So let's click create and this is automatically created an approval. You can also add user groups if you have them in Azure DevOps. So now to start using test, let's go back to the release pipeline. Now if we go into the pipelines, you can start editing it from the YAML releases. So let's select this and select edit. To add a deployment to test, Let's copy this whole stage. So let's make sure to select and copy the whole deployment to dev stage and then paste that below that. So let's make sure I have it in the correct position and paste all the contents. Now I have the deploy to dev and let's start renaming this as deploy test. So let's rename all the dev to test. Now for this environment, since I have already created test, I can use that and it will not be automatically created since it exists. Everything else remains the same. Now for the resource group name, we can change this to test as well and everything else looks fine. So let's look at the variable names. Now that has YAML releases test. So we'll need to create a new group with this same name. So let's save this again, commit it to the branch. So let's say, adding test environment and click save. Let's go under library and clone this variable group. So clicking clone is going to create an exact copy of that. So let's name this test and also make sure to replace these to be test. So when it automatically creates the resources, it will use this name. Let's click save, go back to pipelines and run this pipeline again. Make sure to choose the Azure pipelines. We have not merged this pull request yet. So it's still on that branch. So let's click run. Now you can see that the commit is adding test environment. And also it has now a third stage appearing up down below. So now it has a deploy to dev and a deploy to test and the build which is building currently. The build is successful. So it has automatically started the deploy to dev like we wanted. Once the deploy to dev is completed, you can see that this is now waiting on deploy to test. This is because of the approval that we had added. If you navigate back to the pipelines, you can see that here also there is a wait symbol. If you click on that, it shows a message. One approval needs your review before this can be run. So if let's click review and it says 
these approvers must approve. So since my name is already there and I'm logged in with the same account, I can reject or approve this particular release. So let's say tested in dev and select approve. Now that's going to trigger off the deploy to test stage. If we go back, we can see that now this has started to continue execution. Now that will wait for the timeout days that we had specified. After that, this will become invalid. So you can pick and choose based on your team's workflow, how and what approvals you need to set for these pipelines and the environments that's there. So let's wait for this to complete. If you go into the test, you can see it has already replaced the tokens and it has says two tokens replaced and it's now currently using the ARM template deployment. So if we go into the resource groups and refresh this, you should be start seeing YAML releases test. So let's navigate into that and the deployments will again show you the history of the deployment. Once that's complete, we should be able to see the web app in here. So let's wait for this pipeline to complete. The pipeline is successful. So let's navigate back into the Azure resources, refresh this, and we can see the web app up here. So let's navigate to that. And we can see the ASP.NET React template again. So now the whole release to the test environment is also successful. So let's go back to the pipelines and under environments, we can now see the dev and test both has a deployment against it. If you navigate into the dev environment, you can see there are two runs because the initial run and the next one that we created for the test. If you navigate into the test, you can see only one, which is the latest deployment that we just did. Now, if your environment has multiple applications, let's say an Azure web app, a Windows service, an Azure function, etc., you can target all of that to the same environment. So you can see all the different deployments that's happening for your application as a whole inside of here. Under the pipelines, you can also see a good summary of the releases that has happened and the different stages that has run. I hope this helps you to understand more about YAML releases, how it's structured, and also how to create one of your own. Based on your application, you can use different tasks in the release steps and build and deploy your application. Now, as we saw, the releases now belongs to your YML file and lives along with the source code repository. So it grows and upgrades along with your source code. Try migrating some of your smaller projects into this YAML release pipeline and see how that goes. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also feel free to drop in comments or questions below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be notified in the future of similar such videos. Thank you and see you soon.